The initial generation of the primary genetic sequence of a particular organism is called de novo sequencing. A detailed genetic analysis of any organism is possible only after de novo sequencing has been performed. De novo sequencing is typically accomplished by assembling individual sequence reads into longer contiguous sequences or correctly ordered contigs in the absence of a reference sequence. Historically, de novo sequencing was carried out using capillary electrophoresis sequencers. With its long read lengths and high accuracy, CE-based sequencing made overlap consensus assembly the gold standard technology for de novo projects. However, more recently, the high-throughput capabilities of massively parallel sequencing and the development of short read assemblers have significantly reduced the time and cost associated with sequencing an entire genome. During the de novo assembly process, partially or sometimes fully overlapping reads are assembled into one or more contigs. Sets of overlapping or non-overlapping contigs are joined into one or more scaffolds. Sets of overlapping or non-overlapping scaffolds are joined into a single chromosome. In the contig assembly step, reads must overlap by a minimum number of base pairs, or k-mers, before they can be mapped together. In the scaffold assembly step, contigs do not necessarily have to overlap in order to be joined together. This can be attributed to paired-in sequencing. In the chromosome assembly step, scaffolds are joined together in a gap filling, gap closing, or genome finishing process. This final step is difficult and sometimes impossible to complete using only short read technology. The presence of repetitive sequences especially can inhibit gap filling using only short reads, although some progress is being made in this area. Finishing complete chromosomes often require the use of multiple sequencing technologies and hybrid assembly protocols. It is common to see short read technology combined with long read technology to generate fully finished genomes. Employing multiple sequencing technologies on a per sample basis can be costly. There are many de novo assembly algorithms and software applications available for next generation sequencing projects. For small genome assembly such as bacterial scale genomes, tools such as spades and genius can be useful. The major factors that determine the required depth in a de novo genome sequencing study are the error rate of the sequencing method, the assembly algorithms used, the repeat complexity of the particular genome under study, and the read length. Genomes that have been sequenced to high depths by short read technologies are not necessarily a substantial improvement in assembly quality compared with those produced using the earlier lower coverage Sanger sequencing technology. Although the human genome was initially assembled to high quality with 8, 10-fold coverage using long-read Sanger sequencing, a raw coverage of approximately 73-fold was required to generate the first short-read-only assembly of the giant panda genome that was of lower quality than the human genome. A similarly low coverage, approximately 7.5-fold dog genome, which is similar in size to that of the giant panda and was assembled using Sanger sequencing reads, is more complete and more contiguous than the giant panda genome. These differences arise because Sanger sequencing reads are longer, are derived from larger insert libraries and can be assembled using mature assembly algorithms. High-quality assemblies are now often produced using hybrid approaches, in which the advantages of high-depth, short-read sequencing are complemented with those of lower-depth, but longer-read sequencing. In general, low coverage has two principal effects on analyses and biological interpretation. First, it is not possible to resolve whether an absence of a protein coding gene, or a disruption of its open reading frame, represents a deficiency of the assembly or a real evolutionary gene loss. Second, and perhaps more seriously, low depth can introduce sequence errors that are in danger of being mistakenly propagated through downstream analyses and misdirecting conclusions of a study. To mitigate this possibility, two approaches are recommended. First, low-quality bases or sequences that align poorly against a closely related genome should be discarded from such analyses. Second, adjacent bases that have high-quality scores should also be discarded because they can contain a high density of residual sequence errors.